Welcome to the New Rugged Order Podcast, exclusively on the Hard Knock Digital Culture Channel. Now give it up to your host people, MM2K. What's up people, what's up people, what's up people? It is your boy, MM2K. Can y'all hear me? Uh Uh-oh, okay, I just wanted to make sure. Make sure all audio levels are good. Of course, we got my homie Cold Blood Sensei in the house. He's in the house. Uh, who else we got rocking with us today? Anybody else rocking with us today? Um, it's me, Cold Blood Sensei, right now on the night bot. That's that. That's who it is. All right, that's that's all we need, baby. That's all we need, baby. But uh, big ups to everybody that came out to rock out with us, whether you're doing it live or you're doing it on demand. Um, this is going to be a good show. I know I make this promise every week. Cold Blood is uh, a, t- a testament to it. This is not going to be a long show. It, it Well, number one, it just can't be. It can't be, for one. Um, and for two, not a lot of stuff to cover, but some very peculiar and interesting things nonetheless. So we are going to have a good show. It's just not going to be the two and a half to three hours of MM2K bambling and rambling. The reason why I can't be is because I had to postpone showing this all week. Normally we do this on Tuesdays. I had to push this back to Friday because we had so much stuff going on. Um, We had the big, big interview uh, on the Stadia dosage side with Duncan want to escape. Cold Blood Sensei was there as well. Oh, big up to Cold Blood Sensei, man. Um, big supporter of all my content and all that other stuff. He was there, you know, in his in his normal effery. Stadia sucks. Yeah, he was he was doing his thing, man. <laughs> he was out there like a kid and play background dancer, man, dancing all over the chat. Stadia sucks. We was like, whoa. But you know what? If you if you don't believe in cloud gaming or Stadia or anything in that realm, that's fine. Because people like when cold blood comes over there, those are true testaments to where if you pique their interest, the biggest skeptics, then you are then you know you're doing something right, okay? If you can get their interest peaked while maintaining the people that are gassed up about your service, then you're doing something right. So I'm not one to go and tell people what you have to say doesn't matter. I don't like what you have to say. I think what you're saying is corny. That to me, that just defeats the purpose because it it goes to a majority rules type of mentality. And when it comes to gaming, you don't have to be like that. Like I remember I've been gaming for 30 plus years and I'm gonna get, I know I'm all over the place, but I just, I had an incident earlier this week that kind of it was disappointing and I, and I didn't expect it, but then, but I should have known better. I didn't expect it on who it involved, but then I was full of myself. I was, I was, I was listening to rhetoric and I thought that said person had a different approach to things and I, and I should have known better. Z always tell me, I never listen. Z always tell me these, these mugs out here are some weirdos, right? So what am I talking about? Well, um, don't want to, let me do some. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get things organized and all that fun stuff. We, we're getting ready for the Skype calls. I'm trying to make sure I see my homie cold blood. And when I see buck that big ups to buck that, i make sure I, I see everybody in the chat talking their stuff. Stadia sucks. Um, anyway, no, I was disappointed because that notion was thrown out there that what you have to say, as long as it doesn't fit to the majority, shouldn't be heard. And I've been gaming for 30 plus years. I remember the tabletop gamers, right? When I was growing up, the big thing was going to the arcade, getting as much quarters as you could through the week. Because there, there really wasn't no gaming system. All like, And then when there was gaming systems, they were far more inferior to the arcades. See the whole PC master race thing. They're der- if you do your history or if you speak to somebody in the know, 
that PC master race is derived from the arcade groups because the best way to play games, the best fidelity was on those, those game cabinets. You know what I'm saying? That was the old PC master race from back in the day. Just as that fidelity became more modular and was brought into your home, those people converted from playing the arcade games at the cabinets and wasting their quarters there and taking their money and more expensively spending it on top of the line PC parts. Everything, everything has an origin. All right. So that was our thing is every throughout the week we were collecting quarters. We meet up halfway on Wednesday. How many corners you got, man? I got five dollars worth of quarters. All oh, food. I ain't gonna get you but two games of Street Fighter, a couple games of Ultra Beast. You know what I'm saying? Like we be b- building up our quarters, selling lemonade, doing whatever we could, and you know around the way. And then come f- Saturday morning, we all hook up. We have to watch our Saturday morning cartoons, do whatever we do, and then be like, all right, yo, let's hook up. One o'clock. We head to the mall. We head to the arcade. Boom. We go to the arcade, we be there to like five, six o'clock. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes even later, depending upon how long. Normally we would run through our quarters by like five, six o'clock. Go grab something to eat. You know what I'm saying? Go to the McDonald's, whatever. You know, go get a hoagie, come back to the crib, cut up, play football, do whatever for the rest of the day. That's that's how we 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 went outside. We had fun when I was growing up. You know, and that's how we operated back then. But during that time, never did we say to ourselves, hey, yo, them tabletop gaming dudes, the dudes that play the Magic Gathering or the Dungeons and Dragons, man. We never rolled up on them and smacked the table up in the air, knocked the cards into the sewers and stuff like that. We never did that. We said that's something that's, that's a derivative of what we like to do, some of that nerd culture. And it may not be my thing, but maybe I'll try it or maybe I won't. And I'm saying all that to say this, like, even though they didn't fit into the majority of the people with my mindset, we still appreciated them. And we, and then as far as them getting knowledge and them getting growth and them growing what they do, we was cool with it. That has all evaporated in today's climate. And I don't get upset when the younger people do it. It just is what it is. Things grow. And as things grow, things go. You know what I'm saying? Like some of the stuff that I cherish as a child growing up just don't exist anymore. And now that I'm older, when I see, when I was like in my thirties, going into my late thirties, that's when I was really vocal. This is stupid with y'all young people like is dumb or whatever. If this is really the thing and all that stuff, I've learned to let that go. Cause as things grow, Other things go. It just is what it is, right? You can't be the old man shaking your fist at the window. Maybe you can be. That's why we started Scram Punks. Whatever the case may be, you can't always do. You can't always get away with that. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your breath in in a lot of ways. And because I learned that, I when I see younger people doing this, I don't get upset. It's just what what they've been bashed and how they've grown up. But what upsets me is when I see people my age or older doing this stuff. The same people that were going to the arcades like how I used to. They understand the culture, but they've conformed so much that they're picking up on on, on this mind state that they should know better than. See, the younger people don't know better because this is all they know. So it's up to us to be knowledgeable, to be wise and educate them and guide them where we can. They're not going to accept everything that we've done and that's okay, but at least they can learn from our mistakes and we can use our knowledge and our wisdom to guide them. You don't conform. You don't go backwards. You don't go backwards. And I had an interaction interaction this week that made me feel, feel like that I was going backwards. Here's what happened. Somebody posted something about Stadia. <laughs> Everything's about Stadia, boss. Somebody posted something about Stadia. Now, me being in the mindset that I, I'm in, I saw somebody in the thread that said, you know what? I'm really interested. Is Stadia better? Is, I mean, is Destiny better on Stadia? Or is it better on these said platforms? Somebody chimed in. I'm getting ready to chime in anyway. Somebody chimes in and adds a well-known entity into the conversation. Well-known entity says 
blah, 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 blah. They prefer a different cloud-based platform. I had no issue with what they had to say. I thought that what they said had had a lot of merit to it and it was subjective. It was their opinion. You can't, and like Z say, you can't be wrong for your opinion. So as they were sharing that information, I said, well, that's one aspect of it though, to help give a full, well-rounded, full perspective to this individual that's asking an honest question. They're not console war. I hate cloud game. They're just asking an honest question. I gave my take. Well, I prefer Stadia's version of Destiny 2 because it is the definitive version with the collector's edition. It runs at 60 frames per second. You know what I'm saying? Like everywhere. It's the best performing on all of the uh, platforms. Like even if you sideload it, which isn't quote unquote supported, you sideload it on any phone, it performs better than xCloud, NVIDIA, Shadow, everything. And you get it for a fraction of the price. Meaning if you become a Stadia member, you know what I'm saying? Either you can get access to this thing via, uh, uh, what do you call that? A freaking buddy pass. So you can be playing your Destiny 2 if you're a real big Destiny fan and you want to play it on the go. You could be playing Destiny 2 on the go for as, as as low entry as a buddy pass, an additional $10 a month. The problem is, though, and I didn't even get a chance to get into this part. The problem is, is that the population for Stadia on Destiny 2 was low. But those were the perks. Perks were being announced. You know, the, 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 the cons were being announced. I thought everybody did a well job giving their takes and, 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 and trying to provide the best for this individual. Oh, said entity with the blue check mark, I mind you. Oh no, had a hissy fit. Take me out of this conversation. All the I said, what are we, what? What are we doing? And like, is this to my response? And I had to, I had to click out of the thread and click back in to make sure that they were responding to me. I said, yeah, they're responding to me. I, I don't understand this. And I responded pretty much, I understand it. It would just take me out. And then I said, okay, now I get it. And we've now gotten to a point where everybody can basically do what I'm doing right here. Plug in a microphone and start talking like they're a professional, whether they are or not, and they know what they're talking about or not. It's become less about me providing something to the end user, the other person, the person on the other side of this mic to it's all about me. I was asked a question. I want to take over this thread. I'm the all seeing eye. And it relates back to the scenario that I just gave earlier. It's the equivalent of me walking out of the arcade. I got the popular way to game. Tabletop gamers, get they all out of here and I smacked their magic gathering uh, pieces all over, all over the place. No, no. I don't have that mind state. I look at myself as a consumer advocate. I have my own personal biases. Yes, definitely. I have my own personal quirky tastes. Yes, definitely. But I don't think that way when I'm given my opinion subjectively. And when I give my opinion subjectively, I tell people when, as it relates to cloud gaming, you know what I'm saying? A platform like Stadia, if you have data caps, don't even do it. Don't even pull the trigger. But if you mainly game on PC and you just want something that allows you to play your games on the go, which is only going to be a fraction of the time, but you really love and appreciate sitting in front of that master rig that you spent all that time and all that money on, go with NVIDIA Geoforce, definitely. But all the pros and cons for everything should be put out there and people got to get over themselves. But you got to recognize as the listener too. You got to be responsible too. You got to recognize on the listener that all it takes is for me to want to buy an $80 Blue Yeti mic <laughs> on Amazon, hook it up, get the right settings, copy and paste and have such an alluring voice with deep overtures and talk in such a professional mannerism to where I sound like that I'm professional and I know everything that I'm talking about and I have connections all through the gaming stratosphere. That's all it takes. Don't fall for the okie doke. Be smarter. And when you do that, then you strip away this fictitious power that these people think that they have. It's not about them. It's about, again, the person on the other end of the mic that's listening. Give them a well-rounded look 
a well-round, well-rounded view of everything at their disposal and let them decide. And I find it so saddening and so sick, sickening that not the young people, again, they don't know any better, but people that have been doing this longer than me don't do better. Disgusting. But now that I've rambled, I've let the chat fill up. Let me go to the chat. And see what they got to say about all this. All right. We got Cold Blood Sensei and Buck that going back at it. Um, Cold Blood Sensei says everything is balanced, how things should be. And Cold Blood, the loots chat is up and running too, homie. Um, for some reason, it will not work on YouTube. I don't know what's up with YouTube, you know. Uh, and he says, Buck Nasty. Um, let me see what else here. What else we got here? Buck that says I tried tabletop RPGs really wasn't really into it. Um, <laughs> some of it creeped into the early days of land parties though. So I knew a lot of those people and cold blood since they say it's best on PS4 laugh all our biggest community to play with. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. Um, Cold Blood Sensei says, how about having Buck pay for his sins live on air? I'm just joking. Laugh a lot, but Xbox is last place now when bots are silent. Oh, you know, you know, no, 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 Cold Blood. They ain't silent. It's all about the Bibble Watts and the Gigahertz. Xbox has 17,000 transistors in the communal die of the uh, uh, flipping air capacitators. So they won. <laughs> it's over. Go home. PlayStation 5 sucks. No. Um, speaking of people not acting in the as the best stewards in the gaming community, I don't, I don't, I don't um recognize the 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 stewards of this community anymore. I truly don't. I mean, I get it. And, I, and again, that's another reason why I've pretty much abandoned my Xbox for Stadia. Not just because the games that I'm playing, um, per, not because of per, just personal reasons. Because the games that I'm playing on Stadia, thank God, are available there, are the same exact games I'd be playing on my Xbox anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like the same exact games. I'd be playing nothing but Borderlands, Ghost Recon, Breakpoint. And actually, I got a game on Stadia that I'm playing now that I would be playing on PC, which is Darksiders Genesis. Great game. Great game. Um, those would be the three games that I'm into. A lot, All the other games got pushed back. The only, uh, only other game that I was looking forward to, and excuse my friend, this is the actual title of the game. It's called Get the Fuck Out of Here. Um, and GTFOH is a Steam game. Good looking game. It's early access. Oh, is that, a, that forbidden early access word where you're paying for something to be involved in it early. Oh, uh, yeah, I was going to get that, but it doesn't support controller and I'm trash on keyboard and mouse. Some might even argue that I'm trash on controller, but that's okay. It's okay. I'm, 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 I'm out here fighting a good fight. You know what I'm saying? The best way that I can. I play. Hey, look, I can play what I play. I wish my homie Chad man was here because I'm good at what I play. What I'm not, what I, when I'm new to something, I am horrific. I'm not going to lie. When I'm new to something, I'm, I'm horrific because I dive into new things like a newborn baby. I'm stumbling all over the place because I'm trying to get a feel for everything. I'm just, that's just how I am. Whenever I learn something new, I'm going to be the last person to learn it. But when I learn it, I'm going to have a more well-rounded understanding of it than everybody because everybody's looking for the quick way out. And I'm willing to take my time with stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I can play what I can play. Chad Man will tell you. Neefles will tell you. And Z will tell you. Them mugs, when them mugs first got to Division 2, they was like MM2K. We getting slaughtered out here in these streets. Come on, man. Just be an extra body. We know you can't play. We know you trash, bruh. You trash. But we just need an extra body. Maybe we can get the enemies to shoot at you and use you as a diversion. So come on. I said, oh. I said, really? That's like, yeah, come on. I said, well, what level were y'all at? Oh, we're level nine. I said, well, I, I mainly play on the PC. I'm only level two on the box. Oh, that's even better. Take your ass out there in the front lines, get shot up so we can at least get clear some of these areas. 
I said, oh, okay. Don't you know I came in there at level two and I molly whopped all the enemies. Them mugs was getting shot down left and right. I was sitting there healing them. I wasn't even, I wasn't even the, the medic. I didn't even have the medic layout. I was laying level nine mugs down at level two on the division two. Oh my, by the time we killed the boss, Moss can play. I told you, I'm good at what I play. I don't play everything. You know what I'm saying? So you put me in something new, I'm gonna be trash. Yeah, I'm gonna give you some, I'm gonna give you some good ass laughs. I'm gonna give you 100 percent pure, uncut Colombian laughter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I, what I do play, I'm good at. Period. Period. So with that being said, um, you know, I just I just want us to all of us on my side of the mic, this is a message to you guys, whoever may be listening live or on demand. It ain't about you. I get it. You get a couple of clicks, you put in the right tags, you can get enough attention, and then you might get you a little bit of revenue. But you don't do nothing right unless you sit at this end of the mic and you're looking past gimmicks and, and, and titles and thumbnails. When you sit at this end of this mic, you should have a duty to serve, man. I mean, people shouldn't be looking at us like we're the tell-all, be-all. We're just people with opinions that were just brave enough to hook up a Yeti, pay the $86, hook it up, go copy some profiles, click and pay. We're really nobody special. So at the end of the day, you can't, it is a give and take. You can get something, you know what I'm saying? Or you can take something, but you gotta give. Give some knowledge. Give well-rounded perspective. And you ain't got to be an expert in everything, but be, but give some respect, man. I just can't, I can't stand that, especially from people my age. It makes me sick. So what I had to do was that entity, which will remain nameless, I had to go and disconnect myself from them and the platform that they work on, man. I can't, I, I, I can't support that. And, and it hurts because it was one of my favorite platforms, but I just, I, I, can't, I can't, I can't get jiggy with the shit. I can't do it. It's bigger than you. Is there, a, is there a, a, a gargantuous amount of people that are running, bursting out the seams to play Stadia or do cloud gaming in general? No, there's not. It's, it's the minority of people, but there are people that want to do it. So if you want to talk gaming, at least be a little bit knowledgeable and have a little bit of unbi unbiased and everything gaming. Look, here's what everything's offers, what all, everything offers. Here's my personal opinion and here's why. But put everything on the table because someone may say, okay, well, so-and-so person, you made a compelling argument, but I don't have those concerns that you have. Like if someone come to me and say, you know what? I can't work with Stadia because they ain't got the games that I like. Well, what do you like? I like Sekiro and Call of Duty. I don't play those games. What games do they have? Oh, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to talk to you about it because you just don't like Stadia. Hmm. Or if I'm serving you on this side of the mic, I'm going to say, well, they got border. I heard they got Borderlands Ghost Recon. Oh, Borderlands Ghost Recon Breakpoint? And it's, that's, it's 60 frames per second, right? Better than console? All right, I'm, I'm down. Okay, I get it. Well, the 10 of y'all may not care about it, but I'm the one that it may suit. Have a notion to serve on this end of the mic and give your argument on why you personally don't like it. And if your argument is compelling and factual enough, then the people on the other end of the mic, when they hear it, they'll be compelled to do it. Don't lie to kick it. Don't caveat information. Don't sit there and misinform the public. Give them everything. Period. That's my message. Tired of these phonies, man. But Z told me that these mugs is fake out here. He was in there, honestly, he was telling me about these cats, but that's for another podcast. I won't even get into that, man. I won't even go into the month. Nice guys always win last. With that being said, let me go to the chat. Cold Blood Sensei says, uh, no, they don't win ish. Rulio44, what's up? Rulio says, MM2K, Xbox guy here to balance things out. Oh, I, I, hey, I, I can dig it, brother. Everybody, everybody's well. I don't know if y'all listen to Keith Murray. I'm an old school hip hop fanatic. Um, East Coast hip hop rapper, artist by the name of Keith Murray came out with a song called Everybody's Welcome. I should I should see if I can get that and make that like a, a, a mid intro or something like that. Everybody's welcome here. 
Whether you agree with me or not, I'm here to start. I'm here to talk about things and bring a different perspective, but I'm here to look at everything. And to, to, to keep me honest, I need you guys to be involved. That's why I don't shun y'all away. I mean, yeah, if you come with a counter narrative, you better be able to back it up. Oh, hell yeah. You might get hit with the unity ring, but that's okay. We're all building each other. We're all building each other. That's the way it should be. Cold Blood Sensei says, Stadia has no JRPGs other than Final Fantasy 15. Big mistake. Um, I wouldn't say it's a mistake. I would look, here's the real deal about Stadia, and we're not gonna make this a Stadia podcast, but um great interview. I, would you say Cold Blood? Cold Blood could great interview with Duncan. Like Duncan, if you didn't know that he liked Stadia. You would think that him, you would think that it was Cold Blood Sensei sock account. <laughs> I mean, my man was laying into Stadia, wasn't he? Cold Blood. Let's be honest. He was laying into Stadia. You know, be honest. You know what I'm saying? We're not all hive minded. We all don't wake up in the morning like Tyrone Biggums with the white ash around our mouth, scratching our neck. Look, let me find the most ridiculous thing to cap for, baby. No, we don't wait. We don't do that. We're not hive minded. We all have our individual tastes. And we do like what we like for whatever reasons. And there might be other people like us. That's all we're saying. But Cold Blood was there. My homie Duncan, writer for, and, and I believe he's an editor too for Stadia Source. Oh, he was laying a smack down the Stadia. There was hardly any positive positivity, but it's okay. Because he's a staple of the community. And he's give, he's making sure that we represent the full spectrum within the community. That's the way it's supposed to be. So I didn't shut him up. I didn't say, well, hold on. MM2K is normally pro stadia here. Shut up. No. We put everything out on the table. And we let you decide. But to Cold Blood Sensei's point, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a mistake. Because I don't think that. Stadia intended it, intended it to be this way. Look, man, y'all got to understand this is a business. Let me ask you a question, Cold Blood. Before all this muck and all this stuff that happened with Stadia and the bad AMA and all the other stuff, let's say you invested in said company that said, we're going to make a game for Stadia. And you're like, okay, whatever, cool. we'll, we'll see. And then you hear all this muck. And so then as an investor, you go and be like, okay, we hear that y'all doing something exclusive for these mugs. These mugs is getting filleted and sauteed in the, in the news. We want to announce it now. We want to wait till it gets a little bit better, man. We don't, we don't want to get caught. We don't want people to come in after. I mean, whether it's right or wrong, we don't want people coming after us. We don't want this affecting our bottom line, affecting our stock price that we wasted. We quote unquote wasted resources. That's the way that people going to look at it, right or wrong. We wasted resources porting our game to this place. We don't want to do that. So then they go to stadium and be like, look, man, we, we got y'all back, but we kind of way back right now. Like, <laughs> we, we will still work on this thing, but we just don't want you to say nothing out in the public right now. Right? It, like, isn't that right and isn't that fa fathomable? All of these relationships are fragile. So I don't think it's a matter of Stadia ignored more RPGs. I think it's a matter of, number one, if I'm a Japanese developer, I'm a you, the Japanese when they do business, they're nativists. I'm not saying this to be racist or anything like that. Sound big? That's the truth. I've done we at a Fortune 500 level. I've done business for decades with Japanese entities. They are nativists, meaning they look out for their own first, and then after their own has been fed, then they'll give you the crumbs. I don't care how bad something is. If they have no all, if they have no choice, they'll make one. And then they'll give you the crumbs just, just to spread, just to spread, put eggs in many baskets. That's how they operate. So number one, you got a well, you got a well-established entity like Xbox that they got to kick and claw just to get monster hunt on the console. So if it's that hard for Xbox, what the hell you think you're going to look like for Stadia? <laughs> ain't nobody, ain't nobody running to, to put stuff on there, even though. Out of the developers that were interviewed, more developers were enthused about their work being on Stadia than they were xCloud. 
And I think they were more enthused because, and I think more that admitted to it are actually enthused. They just don't want, they just don't want the ruckus. But they were enthused, I believe, because they know Stadia all around is the better performing platform. It's just that Google has to do the right things to get it in flight. So I don't think it's a matter of them making a mistake and saying to the subjective, I don't, we don't want this stuff on here. They're not coming. I mean, 120 games they had locked. Thank God they had them. They probably had them on lock as me and Duncan had alluded to in our conversation yesterday. They had them on lock before uh, all this, all this stuff started happening. The Paul Tassies and the Young Yays started saying, this is our cash cow. Now it's a slow news week. So why not twist and contort words? Young getting more clicks Tassie's pouring out more articles when there's really not much to report out of. It's a it's a gold mine for these people. So, um, it's I, I, it's it's not good. I think it's a better way to put it, in my opinion. It's not good, but a mistake. Me in, in um inclining that they just said, nah, yeah, you guys ain't got to come. They they no the Japanese and you can't just throw money at them. Like they got an honor system that you can't believe you ain't throwing money at them. You, you, you're not do you're not throwing money at them. Microsoft tried. They sent my boy. That's part of that, uh, London that, 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 that he's head of, uh, Peter, Peter, Peter Moore, Peter Moore, and Seamus Blackley. They shipped their asses over to Japan and had them living there from what I understand. Still didn't produced in the boatloads we got some good you know some night what 99 nights some stuff like we got a couple of good you know doers out there but no at a massive level like how we see on playstation oh hell no no that's just how they get down uh cold blood sensei uh he's cold blood since he says no nah, duncan is by by his tour stadia he gets his jaw broken like you and May. <laughs> hey, bruh. He said, but you, but yeah, but is Yong lying about stating not having any games for 40 days straight? No, long, that's not what Yong said. If you go to Yong's post, Yong, Yong Ye has said that they were radio silent for four days. It's true that Stata didn't have any games in January. And we talked about that in the interview. And that is definitely Stadia's fault. That's unacceptable. What they did is they said, this is what Stadia is doing, which I surmise is, is going on with them. Stadia, look, this is the richest company in the world. They know, I don't, y'all can deny it all y'all want. Google knows that outside of y'all, bouncing around on Twitter, they don't know that aren't really connected to the casuals, they could care. They really care less about what y'all say because in their mind, when they go live, live, when the 4k is 4k, when the, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the YouTube stream features, the auto connect, the stream connect, when all that is functioning all at the same time, they going to pivot away and go towards the casuals that don't be on Twitter. And when the casual sees that their favorite YouTube star is playing Destiny and all they got to do is, do is click on join so-and-so in Destiny and it pops them right in the game, they feel like they got the gaming casual sold. So they don't care about all this. this it's, it, if you could call it arrogant all you want and it could be arrogant. And is it right for those of us that did get? No, it's not because they they have more up their sleeve than they're releasing. I I I Duncan did shit light on that, and I do believe that. That being said, you guys are fooling yourselves, as my bro from Generation Stadia alluded. Y'all are fooling yourselves if y'all want to treat this like Mike and Tony's gyro shop, like Google is not out here like the richest goddamn company in the world. They are going to flip that switch. And they're going to turn it up. And don't believe me? Look at everything Microsoft is doing. They have totally turned away from looking at Sony as a competitor, wanting, begging, and urging them 
to join forces with them and they all want to collide against Stadia and then whatever Amazon's proposing when they come. And they got the inside track. They know Google is holding its cards right now. Now, with all that being said, is that fair to us? No, it's not. And when I say us, I'm talking about the gaming collective. I'm fine. The same games again that I will be playing on console and PC, I have access to on Stadia. When I'm thirsty and itching for the for the extra fidelity on, on Ghost Recon, I go to my PC. Otherwise, I'm playing on Stadia. I'm good. I'm good to go. <laughs> However, I can look past my own personal bias and say that, no, it's not good that they don't have. Like, I look at PlayStation Plus with Bioshock, the collection. How come that's not a port? Remnant, how come that's not a port? You know what I'm saying? Greedfall. That's, those would have been two great games, if not three great titles, to have stocked in January. Or why not have, I could have understood if they would have said, you know what, Doom, we're going to have Doom and Bioshock Infinite release in January. And then in February, we're going to have Remnant and Greedfall coming in February as ports. And Doom is going to be an original game built from the ground up for Stadia, right? And then let's just say if Doom got pushed back because Doom got pushed back, they say, okay, let's, we just recovered from getting hit upside our head in December from our community. Let's make sure at least January's tight. They'll probably be a little bit more accepting of a lighter February. So let's pull back Bioshock, add it to what we was going to do in January to replace, to replace Doom and let's keep it rolling. See, that would have been a lot more acceptable, but they're being arrogant about it. But do not mistake their arrogance for failure because they are looking well beyond you and I on this podcast when it comes to ultimate success. They are waiting for the, look, the platform works, y'all. It works. It's amazing how it works. Y'all can sit there and tell y'all, y'all can do that like that Shannon Sharp meme where he's shaking his head in the air. No, 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 no. Y'all can do that shit all y'all want. Y'all can armchair court. The platform works and it's amazing. And you have peculiar individuals like Paul Tassie that for some reason can't even get Google Stadia to work. It took him three weeks and he blamed it on mesh integration, whatever the hell that, the hell that, that's the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. God bless you, Paul, but come on, man. I can see through the BS. <laughs> you just don't know what the hell you doing. So the platform works. It just doesn't have the games. It ain't about the 4K not being so 4K and about the features. They just don't have the games right now and they need to do a better job at rolling out some games and they should have prepared for this better. But don't mistake what's going on in this early access period with the future success of this game. I mean, of this platform. Don't do it. You're going to, you're going to, uh, people are going to, people like my homeboy Nethel is going to pull out them receipts and y'all going to look, y'all going to look real silly out here. This is the richest company in the world. They're being a little arrogant right now. Yes, they are. But they're, they're going to gun pads right past us and go get the casuals and they're going to be successful. The question is how successful. Um, Cold Blood Sensei says, here are the facts. As of January 31st, Xbox is still dog shit and gets only dog shit games until the next gen and nobody knows the specs of PS5. Facts. Stadia got a big middle finger um, from CD Projekt Red. I don't think so. I Actually, it's a bummer for gamers. I don't like. It got pushed back because I really had built my whole gaming forte around Cyberpunk 2077. So it threw everything off. But that actually helped Stadia because there was questions if this thing was going to release day and date. And in a prior podcast, I had admitted that if this thing doesn't release day or date for Stadia, it's, it's <laughs> sayonara for 2020 sayonara. You, can't, you cannot have the biggest game that is mentioned to be available on your platform, not released day and day. Early access or not, 2020 would have been a wash. Period. Because that's the biggest game next to Call of Duty game this year and, and Last of Us. We know Last of Us isn't coming to the, to the platform, so that's a never was. But you have Call of Duty and you have Cyberpunk. 
and you're gonna you have cyberpunk on your platform call of duty we don't know yet it's like it's, it's call of duty with the new deal is likely coming to the platform um that being said you have you have it in your arsenal but you can't release a day and date sayonara 2020 so by them pushing that back that actually helps stadia more than anybody all right, we're going to get into the show, y'all, because I did not want to. I talked two and a half hours of Stadia yesterday, and I love the platform, but that's even a little bit too much for me. But that that's that, that should get everybody get that should get everybody warmed up for what we're about to do. Yeah. All right. So I want to do this. First and foremost, big ups to the Broadband Bullies website fantastic website uh we we're all contributing stuff to it like you can see the home page where we got some of the zaniest and we got the most recent articles as they drop we give you our take we connect you to the original sources i mean it's, it's like the broadband bullies in your hands you know what i'm saying so definitely check us out broadband bully site we got a page dedicated to straight gaming um we got movies we got movies, the movies tab. Yeah, we got movies up there. Mommy Nethels. Expand Your Mind is going to be coming soon. You know what I'm saying? So we got we got more on Expand Your Mind coming. You know what I mean? Check that out. Oh, that's dope. Uh, we got Urban Wear on the site. We got RTGB. You know, we got the, with, with the fly gear. With the fly gear. Look at that. Uh, sneakers and stuff is coming soon. We got sports. I think sports is up there. Yeah. You know, the unfortunate situation with Kobe, RIP with Kobe. We got sports up there. Um, and then we got a page that connects you to the merchandise. So definitely, you want to check out the Broadband Bullies website, all right? That being said, let's get into the news. First and foremost, let's talk this. Um, let's talk this thing with Sony. <laughs> Hey, yo, this is crazy, man. I don't even know where I'm at anymore, man, and I'm actually reading this. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, sh I'm not surprised, but it, it's a little shocking to see this, right? Sony exploring PlayStation 4 remote play on Nintendo Switch portable dual shock controller. Let me read you the full article as this is given to us by Push Square. Sony's doing some research in the PlayStation 4's popular remote play feature, potentially teasing some tantalizing new ways to play. As part of the survey share on Reddit, the manufacturer asked whether respondents would be interested in streaming their games to the devices like the Nintendo Switch or Apple TV. It also asked whether users would be enticed by an offline version of remote play. Though it doesn't elaborate on how this would work effectively, actually. <coughs> Excuse me. Elsewhere in the questionnaire, the platform holder posts the possibility of playing previous generation games such as PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 via remote play. There are also references to minor quality of life improvements such as the removal of unused controls on the touchscreen to free up display space. But perhaps the most interesting of all is this reference to smaller portable on the go, DualShock, which would include a screen that allows you to play your games in a more convenient Wii-esque format. They are all interesting ideas, and will they? And while they are unlikely to all be in um, in active production, it's fascinating to learn more where the Japanese giant's mindset is at. How do you think remote play could be improved? Play anywhere in all the in the comment section below. And this is via a Reddit post. I didn't look at the Reddit post. So let's do it together, my peoples. See what it looks like. This is remote play survey leads to possible upcoming features. Uh, using remote play and all this other stuff. Let's see. What's, I don't know if this is even possible. I very much like consistency the video quality improve. Uh, I imagine. So it looks like they're pretty receptive to this. See what I'm saying? Now, my PlayStation brethren are seething. What the hell? What the rock? What the rock? <laughs> Y'all are seething about this. You know, but look at, look at, go to this, go to the link and look at the Reddit site. Muggs is, Muggs is happy about this. These are the casuals. These are the casuals that I alluded to earlier. They don't care about, they don't care about this console war shit. They don't care. 
Look at this shit. Look at this shit. They don't care. And that's why I, I'm going to tell y'all this. And this is leads to a, a big chunk of the reason why I'm so diehard on Xbox. Remote play is fantastico. <laughs> Remote play at the moment works better than Xbox console stream. It just does. And people may look at that and say, MM2K, console stream is in beta. I don't want to hear that shit. All beta means is right now is don't hold, don't, don't hold me <laughs> to any mistakes right now. Because all before they even go into beta, there's a lot of user testing done already. But we got entities that are in beta for two, three, four, five years. And stop it, man. Stop. And NVIDIA, GeForce, Shadow, I ain't, well, let's not even talk about Stadia. I've already showed the video. That discussion's over. But those two platforms run circles around xCloud. And when it comes to in-network performance, PlayStation Remote Play runs circles around xCloud or game console stream. Now, I dare any of you of my Xbox brethren to tell me you're wrong. And I will do to you, Mammy Jammies, you MFers, the same thing I did when y'all were talking shit on Stadia. Do not make me pull out my Mobsian application and show y'all. I booted up three games. Fallout 76. I did Destiny, the free version. Did I remote play from both uh, consoles? And I can't remember the third game. I think it was Bullet Storm or something that I had on both platforms. Three games that I booted up. All three games performed better in that in the same network on the same phone on Remote Play than they did XCloud. That's why I'm so hard on XCloud because Xbox under Microsoft is the richest company in the world. And they are not taking this cloud gaming serious enough like their competitors are. Even Sony is taking remote play more seriously. Remote play is better. I'm not saying it's leagues, but it's better. And that shouldn't be because you're Microsoft. Cold Blood since they said it, they're a trillion dollar company. Sony is eating your lunch with remote play? I don't want to hear that bullshit from all these other, these people with these blue check marks. It's just a beta. Shut up. NVIDIA GeForce is a beta. Shadow Blade is a beta. Shadow got three German mugs sitting in the grandma's basement running that thing. They nowhere near have the capital of Xbox. Stop making excuses. I don't know what pot or lucky pot or, or casserole Microsoft is sitting to your house, but you are embarrassing yourself because you have no integrity. You're not telling the truth about the performance of xCloud or game console stream. I'm taking Stadia out of the conversation. It's worse than everything. With exception of Steam Link. <laughs> it's the only thing it's not worse than. You're embarrassing yourself. Don't make me pull out my mobsy in that and do it all over again because I will. Three games, Fallout, Destiny, and I, I can't remember. I got to look back. I just didn't record it because it takes a lot to set it up and record that stuff. And I just like, oh, man, ain't even worth showing this. Y'all made me come out the woodwork with that, that Destiny comparison because I got tired of y'all garbage. These silly people with all these numbers next to their name, you you people look to you because you, you have a responsibility with all your hype and acclaim to be uh, truth-telling and forthright with them and you weren't doing it, so I had to shut you the hell up. Don't make me shut y'all the hell up and pull out that remote play footage. Don't make me do it. Don't make me do it. Um, Cold Blood says there's stability problems on NVIDIA GeForce. I haven't experienced it. Um, through Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and that's a very resource-heavy game. Oh, that's a that game is a good test on how well your platform works. Uh, because not only is it resource-heavy, 
but the the graphic user interface can be a can be problematic. And my problem with Shadow Blade is Shadow Blade is basically a remote. Um, it's a, it's a it's a virtual computer. And what they do is they try to give you ways to configure uh, mobilizing through a computer on a phone. And it doesn't always work. It doesn't always work. And God forbid you try to sideload it and play it on Android. Now, again, you guys may say, well, if you're sideloaded, it's, it's not supported. But everything else is everything else still works. NVIDIA GeForce, when you sideload, it works. xCloud, when you sideload it works just doesn't work well <laughs> you know what i'm saying even google stadia when you silo there's so many ways to silo google stadia you know what i'm saying everything else works except for shadow and then then you take in the fact that shadow when you sideload it onto other android devices doesn't work like its competitors which kind of hampers its mobility um you take that into consideration, and then you also take into consideration that when you play an Ubisoft game off of platforms that are just connecting you to the PC version, you got to then interact with the PC GUI or the graphic user interface for U Uplay and Plus. And if you've ever had to do that on an Android device, you understand my frustration <laughs> and why. I do personally appreciate Stadia a lot more because they wipe out those graphics. Because they're not straight PC ports, there is no loading. You know what I'm saying? And then there isn't those, you got you ain't got to deal with these, these client graphic interfaces. So uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint is a great measure to see how well it performs. And when I played Ghost Recon Breakpoint with other people, when I was on NVIDIA and GeForce, I didn't have any problems. I didn't have any stability problems. On Shadow, I did. I did on Shadow. And I don't even want to talk about xCloud. xCloud is an embarrassment. X, um, Cold Blood Sensei, sign up for it. Sign up for NVIDIA. You will be amazed. You will be amazed. And then once you sign up and you play NVIDIA, I couldn't even imagine. I hate talking, bringing up Stata because this isn't the platform for it. But I, once you play NVIDIA, You'll be amazed and you'll be like, damn, this shit really works. And take that amazement and multiply it by two. When it came, I, I had no, I, I didn't think it could get better than NVIDIA as far as performance is concerned. But I don't want to talk about Xbox. This is an embarrassment. That's why I'm so hard on them. What they got nothing to do with Stadia? It's, a, it's an embarrassment. I'm, it's, it, may, it, it makes me sick sometimes, even, I'm serious. I know I'm sound like I'm being over dramatic and over the top, but it makes me sick. That a multi-billion dollar company first told you to buy our thing, buy our, our, our console at 500. Oh, we got another one coming out. It has great 4K upscale. Give us another 400. Okay, we got the most powerful console coming at 500. Software means so much to us, but we're releasing with Super Lucky's Tales and a niche racer. They tell you all this stuff. VR is coming. Oh, yeah, it's going to be VR ready. You're going to get, yeah, you know, all this, all these things. And it's, it's a perpetual state of weight. And you're doing all this stuff. You would think that you were Sony and Sony was you. You would think Sony had the war chest, the ultimate war chest. You would think Sony was the trillion dollar company and you weren't. I mean, I want to know what, what how does Sony get out of, look, I don't want to hear, and I've said this before and I'm going to move on. I don't want to hear about Terry Morrison. Nobody was cutting the checks. Seamus Blackley's pension was too much for Xbox to do anything. They're a trillion dollar company. Meanwhile, across the street, Sony was selling lampshades, shrink wrapping the, 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 the last of the sushi in the back of the refrigerator to sell on eBay. Whatever they could do to make money and they still were able to hamper out, collect quarters out of the couch and, and, and smash out second party deals while they got their first party in order for the next generation. And then there's rumors, I can't say too much, there's rumors that we might get a big second party surprise for Stadia. That's all I can say. I won't say anything further. So if Sony can do it and potentially Stadia does it, where's Microsoft at with it? 
Where's our big time second party exclusive for Microsoft? We could have had it with Outer Worlds. Could have had it with Outer Worlds. So don't give me that bullshit that you can't buy. They bought the development company and it was to their discretion, just like it was to EA's discretion, whether they wanted to cancel the deal with Microsoft over um, Mass Effect. It was to their discretion. If it was, uh, what's it called or not? I'm hearing about these deals or whatever. No, the way a lot of these laws are set up, a lot of times, yeah, the deals with the publisher makes it impossible for you to do something like that. Sometimes it doesn't. Like with, you know, like with, in the case of Mass Effect. EA could have very easily said, now that we've bought Bioware, we're going to make this game a multiplat. But no, they decided in good faith to work with some, um, with Microsoft and keep it uh, an exclusive for the second iteration. And Phil Spencer alluded to that after they bought Obsidian, Obsidian approached them and said, are you going to make this an exclusive or can we still make this multi-plat? And Phil was like, well, no, I'm not going to do it. We're going to still keep it multi-plat. Alluding to that the power was in Phil's hands. Now, if that isn't the case, then they need to come out and clear it up. But from, for all intents and purposes, as far as we know, Microsoft could have gave you that second party exclusive. That was a big hit. Outer Worlds was a big hit in 2019. Pulled hella numbers. So don't give me that bull crap. No, it, it, it doesn't fly here. It, doesn't, it flies against the, it doesn't fly against the facts, period. Xbox sold bot snake oil. This gym. Yeah. And I know it's cold blood. We talked about this. It was just a matter of us being stupid. But no. If you're a fan of something, you know how. Just look, look. Just like how we got ponies, my pony brethren out here, they're sitting there believing Jim Ryan when Jim Ryan said, these games are pure and precious and we don't want to, we don't want to put these games out on there in first year at launch. And they, they're taking the wrong thesis from that. Well, he's, he's just throwing a bunch of fancy words out there to tickle y'all fancy. And then my, my pony brethren was running out there out of the stables, bursting out. Rrr! Jim Ryan ain't never going to do day and date. And then we got stuff like this happening. We got stuff like this happening. You don't think day and date's coming? Y'all bet, better understand how Jim Ryan is built. Jim Ryan is strictly coin. You know, that's why he's not talking to you. I don't care. He don't care. He don't care. <laughs> he doesn't. If he thinks this is lucrative, he's rolling with it. That's why you got surveys like the old regime would have never, never went public with something. Never went public with something like that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, call us dumb for believing feel all you want. My pony brethren have done it too. Jim Ryan thought, we 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 cater with care, like a Fabergé egg. We, we feel it's precious. It's precious. And everybody was running out of the stables with that. And I'm here to tell you, don't put nothing past these companies. I don't trust none of them. And that's why I love the Stadia community, because... Like y'all saw with Duncan, they don't do that. They hold their people's feet to the fire and they do it early. So that means that you're going to have a player base that's always going to check their leaders. You know what I'm saying? They're always going to check their leaders. And that that's a community that I like to be in. All right. So with that said, as far as I'm concerned with this, um, never say never. I think it will be cool because I love remote play. Remote play is works very well. It's a very great feature. It works very well. If you haven't tried it, give it a shot. If you're sitting in the living room or you're sitting away from your console, just try it. Download the app and set it up and give it a try, man. It's, it's it, 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 You'll be surprised. It works hella good. Um, and with that being said, um, I would ultimately like, I've said this earlier, I would love with the PlayStation 5 to... 
either at launch or sometime a year after launch for Sony to release a portable DS5 that operates just like that, that has a touch screen that you can take with you. Either that comes with your console, you know what I'm saying? Or it comes a year later and you can use it as a controller when you're at home or you could, you know, you could take it with you on the go. I would love to see something like that. That would be fantastic. So that's just my take on it. Um, and Cold Blood Sensei says, I hope that happens. I have a switch. All right. So on to the next thing. Just never say never. Xbox Peculiar Week. Okay. My good buddy, Tom Warren. I love Tom Warren. Even when he's talking bad on stage, I love Tom Warren. <laughs> oh. Xbox Peculiar Week. Uh, we had the Phil, fl- uh, we, we, we had poor financials, a Phil flip flop, a switch out, switch out paces it and a failure at buying potentially a failure at buying platinum per, um, our homie, Sam, Bra- uh, Brad Sam's damn. I got that all butchered. Brad Sam's of, um, Paul F- uh, Therot.com. So let's start with the bad numbers. Tom Warren says some useful stats on Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft gaming, Xbox business is around 9% of its revenue. Sony's PlayStation is around 20, 26% of its revenue. And of course for switch, it's 96% of their revenue. Um, let me go back here. I'm trying to console sales haven't been strong for Xbox one. Sony has sold 102 million PlayStation fours. Nintendo has sold 52.4 million and Xbox is rumored to be around 50 million. So and we'll talk about switch out pacing it soon. For those of you that don't realize that, they, you know, Microsoft had some very big dips. They went down 21%. Let me see if I can, uh, find another tweet by Tom Warren. Um, that gives you a little bit more, uh, a little bit more, uh, 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 look peer into, let's see. No, I can't. Okay. So, oh, here it goes. So Microsoft went down considerably. Oh, they haven't. Okay, he's he's not he doesn't do it in a post. He's trying to be he's trying to be pro Microsoft. Uh, I'm telling you, him and Paul Tassie, they getting some of that Microsoft bandwagon bounty. Um, but yeah, to 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 that, they went down drastically. Seen the same thing last quarter, and I get it to where Satya said that Game Pass doubled. Um, and subscribers. And they also had said some other things too, but as far as revenue was down, it's down big. I think revenue was down 21%. Now the argument in the community is revenue was down for everybody. And that's true, except for Nintendo. Yeah. For the big two, it's, it's, it's true. But these figures that are for Microsoft aren't being seen for Sony. They're not being seen at these levels. Y'all already tried that argument last quarter. got slapped with the unity ring. Don't be the fools and do it again. Granted X, I mean, uh, um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, Fortnite not doing as well on consoles is having an impact on everybody. But because the other gang makers have other notions, other product placement that supplements things like Fortnite and third party, like their exclusive titles, the, the, that stuff can offset when the third parties don't produce for you well. So that argument is a farce that it's bad for everybody. So this is a never was. No, it just, it just shows you more why exclusive content to your platform matters and 
I'm not the biggest fan of the no exclusives for Xbox Series X, but hell, it is what it is. That's what we do. We 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 can cry over spilled milk all we want. It's what they're gonna do. If you are gonna go that route, Halo Infinite has to be near perfect. Halo Infinite has to be a 9.5 or above in Metacritic. And I'm not saying that because Metacritic is the be all tell off of a good game. No, Metacritic is a force as far as I'm concerned. But unfortunately, that's the gauge that people use to determine what's a good game or not. Like perception for this game has to be through the roof. It has to seem like that is paying off the fact that you guys are doing the no gamers left behind. And people have to say, oh shit, well, if that game is a 9.5, 9.7, and 8, I mean 9.8, 9, or even just a flat out 10, maybe I will turn in, trade in my Xbox One X, get a Series X, so I can play this excellent game with the best fidelity. Maybe it will be worth it, even though I ain't got to. You see what I'm saying? Nobody's going to pay an extra $600 at NAS for a seven Metacritic game. Do you feel me? That's why when Xbox was promoting Sunset Overdrive the way that they was for the Xbox One, it didn't go anywhere because even though it got a decent score, it wasn't like, a, it wasn't like the system seller. Nobody gave a shit about the game. And Microsoft right here, X, Halo is Halo's gonna be it. Halo, you gotta look at Halo. Halo has to, uh, it has to shoot out confidence. Its whole aura has to be so confident within it that when people see it, when people hear about it, they say, you know what? Maybe it is worth me trying to play that damn game at a flat 60 on a $600 or $500 console. I believe 600 right now. If Halo isn't that, or if they don't have second party deals that are going to be exclusive to the system that are going to make the boxing, or if they don't have anything else that's coming out at release, then this will only continue and it's only going to get worse. They already don't have, they don't have the groundwork ready to even compete for the two point to two billion gamers right now. They don't, they don't. After looking at the competitors, Stadia, Geoforce, Shadow, even, they can't compete on that stage. They don't have, they don't even have the right proposition. They can sit there and say, we got a whole bunch of stuff and you can play it for free. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. They only care for fanboy fodder. When I go to these people and say, okay, well, you seen my video. What was your experience with xCloud? I don't know, but I heard everybody's experience was this. What the hell are you talking? Why don't you have access to this thing if you're capping for it so much? Because they really don't care. It's just fanboy fodder. It's just stats on the sheet. So they got to do better. So first, so do you go with the poor financials? It, 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 the proof is in the pudding. Having exclusives matter. They just do. They matter. Next, let's go to the Phil flip-flop. <laughs> what else happened in a week? So, uh, y'all seen my video. Y'all may have seen my video. I have did a, a pair of them. One on Stadia Doses, the other one on my, my regular platform. Well, I talked about this flip-flop from Phil. So, tweets came out that said Phil was focusing on frame weights. Woo-hoo, whoopie-doo. And then my homie Metal Gaming and all his effort, he said Phil is a flip-flopper you know, flip-flop Spencer. And the reason why a lot of people are saying that because in 2017, Phil was trying to downplay frames. Now he's back on frames. But you had my Xbox brethren come out of the woodwork trying to defend Phil because in 2014, he was trying to bring up frames. So let's, let's look at everything in totality. He was bringing up frames. Then he was trying to downplay frames. And then now again in 2020, he's bringing up frames again. Hmm. It's time to do some research, I say, and not just get all happy with the Twitter fingers and um, click and post and drive off. Do a post buy. You know what I'm saying? Don't do a post buy. Do some due diligence. So I had urged 
My homie Shock Nero that posted this, I said, read the 2014 article. He's talking solely in regards to the 1080p narrative. His argument in 2014 is, our frames are the same, so that's all that matters. Not the same context as leading in frame performance as he's talking now. It's a flip-flop, bruh. He repeats a quote from the thing thinking that that matters. I had to pull him out of the woodwork and show him the real deal Holyfield. 2014, frame is important because we can't not bang with Sony. 2017, visuals over frames is what people care about. Consistent 60 frames per second. You know what I'm saying? It's because they can't stick to 60 frames per second. Promise. 2020, now it's this. You know, frames are everything. We don't want to just throw pixels on the screen. And if y'all need a visual effect, here's what he said in 2014. Frame rate to me is significantly more important to gameplay than resolution in a mix of the two, which brings the right art style and freedom, whether it's PlayStation or our platform. 2017, though, homie says, hold it, I'm buying this $500 console, the most powerful console in the world. What is, how come y'all ain't talking 60 frames per second? And Phil laughs and says, okay, that's correct, but... Why do you care about 60 frames? And they're going back. He can, dude's probably standing and going back and forth. And he's like, hold on. He's like, it's the only one that affects gameplay as far as, you know, a litmus. And it feels like, well, visuals affect gameplay too. And then he goes on to, to, to say, which I don't have capped here. But basically, he says, nobody knows about frames. Who cares about frames? Because nobody really cares about it. To now again, three years later, it's all, you know, oh no, I'm sorry, that's the wrong, wrong, wrong tab. To say now that they are valuing higher, more consistent frame rates over just throwing more pixels on the screen. You see how every three years he goes through a metamorphosis and completely eradicates everything that he says. And it's not based upon market, it's just, it's based upon, he can, he can sit there and say, all these things because they were relevant to what he was marketing right then and there. But it's the fact that he has to disparage the alternative. The fact that he disparages the alternative, but then he ends up going back to that alternative three years later is what makes Phil a flip-flopper. You originally disparage what? The you, uh, resolution. Because you got the frames and frames is all what's important. So you disparage resolution. But three years later, now you're disparaging frames. And then three years after that, you're going back to disparaging resolution. So you're only throwing mud at yourself. You're cutting off your nose to spite your face. And this is why I say Phil should shut the hell up. He, he is the poster child for spiting off your nose, to, I mean, cutting off your nose to spite your face. Proof is in the pudding. Case closed. Next. Nintendo Switch shipments have already surpassed Xbox One lifetime shipments. They're already at 52.4 million when they had a three and a half year late head start. And why did they why they surpassed it? Because as Tom Warren alludes to here. They're not selling a lot of consoles because they don't have they don't have what it takes. I mean, he's trying to sit here and say that it's all right because there's only nine percent of their revenue. How how does that what does that do for the customer? What what does that do for the customer? Are you telling the customer that Microsoft has less regard for gaming than than its competitors do? Is that is that what you're saying? So therefore, they should go elsewhere. Did you think that through before you posted that? But look at that. Two and a half year head start, still got outpaced. And then last but not least, which adds to the peculiar week, you got Brad Sams mentioning that Xbox was about to buy Platinum Games and it fell through. So the reason why I brought up this manifesto <laughs> of stuff is to say this as a hardcore gamer, as someone that loved the Jade empires, the mass effects, the Bioshocks, even the armed and dangerous even the quakes, that hardcore stuff that was exclusive to your system to, for all that to be evaporated and for that to be swapped for this, 
bad numbers, flip-flopping, getting outpaced, losing out on potential deals. Is it a wonder why I'm no longer full-throated behind Xbox? Is that really a, is that really a question? Y'all really don't understand why. Again, I'm a hardcore gamer. This is the hard knock digital culture. I mean, I know me and my homie Cold Blood Sensei was joking earlier. It's, it's time for the number one Xbox hating podcast. <laughs> Xbox is dog shit podcast. But if you're a hardcore gamer, how can you not look at these situations? And just shake your head, bow your head and shake it. I've swapped, you've gone from providing me hardcore games on a regular basis to all this, to all this. And y'all wonder why, it's, it's a question? Stop, stop. So very peculiar week, you're gonna have the Xbox try to flip it because some games went in the xCloud that again, I've illustrated earlier, they don't even care to even have it. They don't even care to have access to it. I have access to it. All I do is kick in Phil's ribs every five seconds. And I'm not a believer in it. I'm the farthest thing from a believer in xCloud. But I have access to it. Why? Because I was eager to get into it. To see what it was all about. Y'all ain't eager to get into it. That's why y'all ain't got access. If someone like me, I don't even have beta access on the Xbox. If someone like me can get it, y'all, if y'all really wanted it, y'all would be in it. But y'all don't even care about it. Y'all don't care. Stop. Stop the foolery. Last thing before we open up phone lines. Matter of fact, now I'm going to open them up now. Let me see something. Got Skype open. Let's make sure that phone lines are working. Do -do 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 -do. Of course, I'm supposed to do this before every single Four seven three nine thirty six twelve. Let's call it. Okay. I don't know if you guys can hear it ringing in the background. That's weird. Okay, y'all couldn't hear it in the background. I don't think y'all could because. I have yet to. All right, so the phone lines are open. I'm opening the phone lines. Call at 724-739-3612. I'll put it in the chat. Call while we're live. And if you have something that you want to say, we'll definitely go over it while we go over this last part of thing. I'm supposed to, I was supposed to be done uh 15 minutes ago. So we're gonna we're gonna go through this real quick. All right, so um Jedi Fallen Order is under scrutiny for some reason. The game got 10 million sales. It's been announced that it reached 10 million. My PlayStation brethren is using that information to say this. Oh, look at this. Who cares? It's on three platforms. Xbox games. I mean, PlayStation games reach 10 million on one platform. And to me, these comments, no matter how they, people are trying to shape them, are the most counterproductive comments that are being made out here. I don't, I don't understand them. And I think I had, let me go look at my tweet. I might have a tweet that we can throw up here where I mention this. Let's see. Okay, yeah, here it goes. All right, so I'm going to highlight my tweet here. Here's why I think this is counterproductive. I say y'all need to stop with these underhanded comments about Jedi Fallen Order. Yes, we get it. PlayStation games done 10 million on one platform, but considering that it, as in Jedi Fallen Order, is a yucky single-player game, you know, nobody wants single-player games anymore. It's accomplished this in two months and it's a non-sports EA game, shouldn't be overlooked. Both feats, which are 
PlayStation being able to do it on one platform and Jedi Fallen Order are great feats. Here's the problem with trying to make this argument. All right. And what they're trying to do is gloat. At the end of the day, when you look at Jedi Fallen Order success, you can't help but to connect it to games like God of War and even Horizon Zero Dawn. But I'm going to say God of War more. Well, yeah, Horizon Zero Dawn because it's a single player game, even though it's open world. Because games like Jedi Fallen Order try to work more off of the God of War formula than they do the previous formula that's that's as equitable to Xbox games, the games as a service. So you have successfully catered a product in a genre that bucks against the normal conventions of an EA, right? That bucks against their normal conventions and all of their games as a service outside of their sports stuff that have flopped the anthems, all that stuff that have done horrible this generation. The Bioshocks. I mean, not the Bioshocks, the, 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 the anthems and the mass effects or whatever else that they've indulged into. Except for Apex Legends, but Apex Legends is free to play. So all of your retail games that buck against the conventions of a single player game like this all flop except for Jedi Fallen Order, which is a byproduct of the re-emergence of the single-player game this generation, spearheaded by games like God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, and in a lot of regards, Uncharted 4. Now, y'all know how I feel about Uncharted 4. Y'all know how I feel about Horizon Zero Dawn. I, you know, I, I really like God of War. But it ain't about me. I can look past my own biases. And here's the point. Instead of making tweets where y'all say, so what? Y'all should be saying stuff like, look what we help produce. We done, we done made people like EA swallow its pride and make the games that we curate. Whether it's 10 million for Jedi Fallen Order on three platforms or 10 million by Horizon Zero Dawn on one platform or God of War on one platform, PlayStation and PlayStation gamers have won. That's how you phrase it. Not no, you don't contrast the two. You bring it within the family because let's be honest, the type of game that Jedi Fallen Order is, is a byproduct of what PlayStation was so successful at. Nothing more, nothing less. Respawn and Vincent Pella, who specializes in shooters. The only had to be, but the only trustworthy studio to do something outside of the sports games had to conform to what PlayStation has made, quote unquote, great this generation. So your argument. Is being or is being placed wrongly. You bring it within the family. Look what we created. What look what's a byproduct of what we've been successful at. And whether, and then you can make a reasonable contrast, but not so much. Don't go too far. And whether it's 10 million of a Jedi Fallen Order, which is a byproduct of our games, or it's a 10 million of a Horizon Zero Dawn God of War on one platform. It's more than evident now that PlayStation and PlayStation gamers have won. PlayStation fans should be the happiest about this. And that's how they need to put your thinking caps on. Look at the big picture, y'all. Everything ain't about a binary choice. Think about it. This, this, this is a win for PlayStation. Because look how y'all forced the narrative. As 
as the 360 forced the narrative last gen. Look how y'all, fo- y'all did something unbelievable. Y'all made EA that went all in as far as the non-sports games on these games as a service game. They had to go to their best developer, but the developer that has no experience in these type of games, pretty much. And they had to rework their whole inner workings. Well, I don't want to say they had no experience. I don't know that, but their, their level of expertise on, in these games. They had to redo their whole reworking to create a game that has been proven by you. You should be celebrating that. Not arguing against it. Put on your thinking caps, people. This is why I call these a lot in these games. I, I, that's why I call it the idiot herd. Y'all are so knee jerk. Y'all don't think. Just move around like a bunch of idiots. Y'all are smarter than that. You, you, you know, I don't know, man. <laughs> just, it, I woke up this morning and saw all these tweets and I was just amazed. I said, y'all really are that un. un, un Y'all really lack the ability to look at the big picture that much? Y'all made Jedi Fall in order. This is a success for y'all. Not to contrast just some 10 million sold. Who cares about that? Look at the big picture. You controlled the narrative. Stop acting like dumbasses. And with that, I go to my chat. We'll read the chat. And then we'll close shop if nobody wants to call in. Big ups to the whole homie Cold Blood since saying he has a loot chat as well. Let's go to that. He said, make me a mod. I want that shiny word um symbol. You're not a mod. Okay, hold on. How do I? Uh-oh. How do I do that? How do I do that? Never made anybody a mod. Which? Add friend. Maybe I gotta make your friend too. Then not let me mod you, bro. I don't see a old blood sensei. Oh, mod user. There we go. You're a mod. I never. You know what? I never even thought about that. Making you a mod, brother. I'm sorry. Me so sorry. But yeah, brother. People got to get with the times, man. Cold Blood says, says, I got Jedi Fallen Order for 35 last month and played through it. It was fun, but too short. I got you. And again, that's, you know, that's the nature of, of single player games. You know, hopefully when they make a sequel, it'll be longer. It'll still have the heart of what made it fun and, 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 and you know, but it'll be longer. I, I thought about installing Quantum Break too. Yeah, Quantum Break is cool. I know Quantum Break gets a lot of hate. I like the game playing Quantum Break. I think it's cool. It's just that Microsoft messed it up with this TV presentation thing. They got too, they got too wacky with it. And, and, and they messed up the essence of it. Just like, I think they got too wacky with uh, Rise. I had no idea that Rise had the third player aspects that it did because they focused so much on advertising it like Connect. I had no idea it played that way. So I was like, this, I, don't, I, I don't care about this game. I don't care about it. And I didn't even know that it had a third per- person aspect to it. So, no, I definitely would install Quantum Break. It's a cool game. All right. With that said, I think that is it for Rulio. Big up to Rulio. So, big ups to Cold Blood Sensei Rulio and the homie Buck that for joining us today. Um, I got to run, take care of some things. And with that said, I want to thank everybody for joining us for this episode of the NRO podcast. Like we do every week the, towards the end of the show, call in the 724-739-3612. We'll go over comments, you know, we'll do it, you know, sit and talk through everything. Um, but with that said, man, very peculiar week in gaming. I know not a lot of news, um, but, you know, we'll see, you know, and this is the platform for hardcore gaming. So that's what we focus on. Um, so we'll see what, what, what brings us back next week. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to do the show next week. I'll keep y'all posted. I'm going to be off air Tuesday. 
I got some very important business to take care of Tuesday. Um, Mondays are the, we do the best damn podcast. So, and then I do the reruns for those of you that are not aware to, I get a lot of questions about this. When, what I do is so what happens is on here on Twitch, this expires two weeks to keep it archived forever. After two weeks, I put it on YouTube. So when this premieres on YouTube, that's why people are like, hold on. I remember that. That's why, because the premiere is basically just a rebroadcast of us going live. Okay. So, um, just keep that in mind, but it gives access to a lot of people that don't make it live. Like we haven't, we didn't have a whole bunch of people that were live today and that's, that's fine, but it's still great content, still great questions in the chat. We want to give everybody an opportunity to be able to participate at some level and get to hear it firsthand before it's evaporated into the ethos. So we archive it on YouTube, you know what I mean? But it's exclusive until it expires. It is exclusive to this platform. It's a timed exclusive. <laughs> and cause ain't nothing wrong with timed exclusives. And with that being said, that's it from your boy MM2K. I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. Again, share this out if you can. I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, keep posted. I will let y'all know when we go live with the next episode. Until then, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.